Hello fam, today we will learn about the early, mid and late rank game tips and tricks of backpack battles so that we can climb the rank ladder and dominate the competition. Tip number 1. Buy 1 gold items as they can be sold back for 1 gold each and you technically didn't lose any money if you change your mind and sold them back to the chest later and you will gain back your gold. Tip number 2. Buy essential common items in the early game. Because as the game progresses, the rarity of the common items will go from 80 plus to 20 percent. Tip number three: Try to fill your inventory with useful items and make use of every space. Tip number four: Buy each of every fruit. Tip number five: Buy items, generators like piggy bank, box of riches, shovel. Tip number six. Buy on sale items as they cost half of their original price and can be sold back at the same price to recruit the set. The spend goal if you change your mind later. Let's say a holy armor causes 12 gold by default, but when on sale will cost 6 gold. When you sell it back, you will gain 6 gold. And thus, is basically a great buy, even if you use it temporarily, because you lose no money if you sell it back later. Tip number 7 Food, weapon, pot, and defense are important to make sure. To have at least one of each. Simple food like banana, blueberries, chili, carrot, mushroom, cheese can go a long way to give you buffs or heals periodically. Having one weapon that uses stamina will boost your DPS to make full use of your stamina regeneration. Health or stone potion, armors or shields can boost your survivability to give your build the best bang for your buck. Tip number 8. Holding an item and right clicking it will rotate it clockwise while pressing Q will rotate it anti-clockwise. Tip number 9. Use WASD on your keyboard to move the whole inventory around. Tip number 10. Reserve 3 or less gold for the next round and not waste them if necessary. Tip number 11. Reserve half of your gold to buy space and the other half for big buys. Tip number 12. Reserve leather bags and space items. Tip number 13. Reserve using right click. Tip number 14. Reserve your customer card in your inventory or you will lose the benefit when you put it in your storage. Tip number 15. Right clicking bot items to block them from combining with others such as gems. Tip number 16. Select as many items by holding left click and dragging across the items and space. Tip number 17. Sell on sale or 1 gold items we needed to make a bigger buy. Tip number 18. Spend 1 gold to refresh the shop 4 times and reroll the dice for better chance of buying what you need. Tip number 19. 2 bananas or strong heroic pots are the bare minimum for more than 1.5 stamina usage per second. Tip number 20. 2 customer cards can combine into a platinum card which will increase your shop rarity items and reflect debuffs. Tip number 21. Attack speed is more important than damage. Tip number 22. Keep in mind meta builds and ways to counter them. Tip number 24. Locking gems is useful when you have plenty of gem sockets and keeping them from combining will increase your percentage when they are not combined. Tip number 25. Replacing leather bag with other space bags can reduce space waste and place more items on your inventory. Tip number 26. Reroll will become 2 gold after 4 rounds of rerolling with 1 gold each. So that is when you should stop rerolling. Tip number 27. Selling weapon can create space and earn back your gold. Make sure important items are in your inventory. Tip 28. Some items like bag of stones, potions, and deck of cards require special positioning rotation and facing directions in order for them to work and affect other items. Kinda like a domino. Tip 29. Speed of action is important when shopping and configuring inventory as your matchup gets stronger if you take your time. Tip 30. Stamina is more important than health region. Tip 31. Variety of utility is important. Try not to build too many duplicates of one single item and diversify your damage, defense, utility, etc. Let's tackle 9 ready questions. Question 1. IWEK7 asks, 
I often have situation with Ranger when I have sword, sword, pen and broom at some point at the start of the game. Does anybody know if it is worth it to keep short sword in this setup or is it bad due to stamina shortage? How about when I have a single banana on top of that? Personally, I would buy wood sword, two whetstones and two gloves to create steel sword then falcon blade which will increase the speed of items activating when placed beside it. Falcon blade is a great addition to other ranger bow builds. I would buy pen and broom only if they are on sale or I'm making a magic stuff build. I can combine the two of them into a shovel which is great for early mid game to get random items when entering the shop to sell or use later. Come mid or late game would be a great time to sell your shovel. Short sword is great for stun dagger builds but overall not great due to the low DPS and high stamina use. A banana increases your stem regen by 0.2 per second. If you have 1.5 stem per second weapon use, you will need at least 2 bananas to avoid stamina issues early in the fight. Question number 2. Unvex asks about optimizing the arrow. Where do I place arrow? Do I go into survival mode with this currently in diamond for his mana thirst magic torch build with Gubert? What else should I build towards? I know I need more Icon Collar, but none shown up. Went for crown and more mana. You can place your arrow in the middle of other items. Point your arrow tip at mana thirst, place magic torch on the side, and dagger on the back of the weapons. So basically, the weapons are all touching the arrow, surrounding the arrow. Followed by other items like foot or shoe on the side of the arrow. Question 3. I, I open us. Can you switch classes if yes, do they have an empty inventory? You can choose one class and one subclass each run, which can run up to 10 rounds pre-survival and up to 18 rounds with survival mode. Second question, if you can switch classes, do you forfeit the previous class and start from zero? You can't switch classes once you pick one class, such as Ranger or Reaper. Each run is only entitled to one class only. Third question, what kind of progress do you even make in this game that is permanent items and ranking? If you play ranked game mode, your ranks and trophies for all classes will stay with you after each run and update after each run. Each run is its own rock like you start over from scratch after each run. Fourth question What game of stages content wise are there? After 10 hours, 100 hours, 3 months, 6 months, etc. What is it like? You can climb the ranks up to Grandmaster for each class. It's just endless PvP fights. I hopefully. Death Festival can allow players to save their builds to test later with a new update. Fifth question Can you change designs of your characters or do all look the same without equipment? You can change and buy new skins in the wardrobe with your game trophies. You can change your hat, hairstyle, your clothing, your weapons, your backpack, your shoes. Sixth question I saw that in battles. You only see the main class, but how do you know the subclass of another player or even yours at first glance on the user interface? When you pick a subclass, every time you arrive in the shop, it will change your class to a new name. So you can see every time you enter the shop. If a ranger picks Mega Clover, she becomes a Groove Keeper. You can tell what subclass of others by what subclass un uniques they pick in their inventory but it won't show up on their subclass names. Number 7. Does every class have the same name as your user or account name or can they all have different nicknames? Your account name and class names are separate. You can change your account name by changing your Steam profile name. And is there any kind of character creation mode or skins other than the equip? Yes, check your wardrobe. Okay, question 4. Sobran types stuff asks, is there a way to mirror the item in terms of direction? Such as the thorn whip looking from like a Z pattern into a S pattern. 
No, you can't rotate an item from left to right, up to down, vice versa, like a mirror reflection. You can only rotate it clockwise or anti-clockwise. Question 5. Serves us. Potions can also trigger the potion above them. Does this create a chain reaction that if the potion in the bottom triggers, it triggers all of them like a domino chain effect? If one of the potions in the chain is empty, will this interrupt the chain? Is there some priority logic which potion trigger first if they have the same effect? Let's say we have four horizontal potions from A to D, top to bottom, in a 2x4 configuration. D at the bottom triggers, it will also trigger C, but when C triggered by D, it will not trigger B or A due to D triggering. It is not a continuous chain, it's more like a D trigger C and then it ends at C. A potion can only trigger of its if its own or the potion under it, the conditions are occurring. So let's say C potion triggers and also triggers B. C becomes empty and B will still be full. C can only trigger again if D triggers it and is linked to C despite C being empty. So there is no chain triggering all the pots. One pot can only trigger the pot above it and the triggering chain ends. If the four pots linked together are the same portions with the same conditions, the bottom one D will trigger first while the, bot the top A will trigger last. So it depends on the condition of each different portion. Question 6, Roadrunner 7671 asks How does rounding work if they have the legendary shoe next to a garlic and the shoe lets star items 30% more armor will ga the garlic gives 4 armor instead of 3 because of rounding? Do gems in armor sockets count for global activations? If I have a green gem in a helmet and my opponent attacks me and gets poisoned Will that helmet next to a Gubert will I get a tick? So for the first part, it will give you it will give you three seven eleven shoes at three point nine seven point eight eleven point seven shoes. So the decimals are hidden. So you won't you won't get four at the beginning. You will get three shoes, and then when it overfills. Then it will give you an extra shoe at the second activation. For part B, right? Gems in armor sockets won't activate birds. Question 7 Grim Shaw. Just a little question to clarify the mechanics of stun. If a person is already stunned and we apply a second stun, will they stack, reset the stun, or nothing happens? I think it will extend the stun. Because stun pauses all cooldowns for the stun. For the period of time, uh, one second stun will pause cooldowns for one second, and then after it is over, all the cooldowns will resume back. Question 8 Non cool name us. First question Does damage display in damage dealt lock include damage which was blocked? Okay, the damage dealt lock, it will not show the shield that was blocked in damage, it will only show the total damage done by each weapons and you can see how many shoes are created by clicking the shoe lock and you have to use a simple math to figure out how many how many damage was blocked. Second question if Lucky Piggy is buffing big bowl of treats how many of those 15% are actually added to BBT? I had two hits buffing it and got 39% total 30% base and are there any other items where that buff is weaker than described? So 15% applies to 30%, the base equals to 4.5%. So when you have two lucky piggies buffing it, 4.5% times 2 equals to 9%. So the total is 39%. The question, how much damage does criticals give? Is it 20%? Critical damage is twice the amount of normal damage, so it's 200%. Fourth question, does getting opponent stun make criticals guaranteed? Stun status does not affect critical chance, so no. 
fifth question. Does anyone know if there are any plans of adding testing board to the game? Where one will set up both sides and let it run and check which works better. No idea, but let's hope their possible will allow us to save use and test them later. Question 9, the last question. True Swag 4 asks tips on defensive items. Kind of a vague question, but should you be aiming for specific defensive items based on your build? Like for example, if I was going a ton build on Ranger, is there a certain piece of armor I should look out for, or just a general item of what defensive items complement what build would be really helpful? Okay, how of Darkness, Steel Buffs, Lower Enemies Healing and Increase Your Max HP, Corrupted Armor to Cleanse and Inflict Debuffs, and Gives You Shield, Stone Helmet or Topaz Gems on Armor to Block Stuns and Criticals, Moon Shield to Block Damage, uh, Very Important Against Stun Dagger Builds, Moon Shield can Remove Enemy Stamina, so these items are great additions to general builds and make you a well-rounder in all stats. So it really depends. If you are doing Reaper, Debuff, Dark Saber builds, you might go, you might heavily require Corrupted Armor. If you are going for Chain Whip, Berserker, Pack Lead builds, you might go for like Half Darkness, Jinx, Torquilla. It also depends on what Synergize well with you. Okay, that's the end of the FAQ. Thanks for watching. Please like and sub for the Elgos. Comment if you have any questions. Have a blessed day, and I'll see you all next time. Adios.